And the really important and difficult question is, why should we all care? Uh, how do budget reforms link to development outcomes is the theme for this afternoon's uh, discussion. Uh, and this is, this is all about what difference everything that we have spoken about until now uh, can actually make. And I guess, you know, why should we all care is, uh, you, you could point to the evidence that the quality of budget systems around the world uh, bears little relationship to development outcomes as such. If you probably ran a correlation between your average PIFA scores and your human development index, the, you could probably see many countries that have very low PIFA scores and you know high enough human development indicators and probably the other way around as well. Countries that have decent budget systems but actually do pretty poorly on the human development uh, on the human development index so then clearly the the the, the question of uh, what difference does this all make is uh, is an important one uh, and this afternoon session is is about how we can try and link um, issues about uh, public financial management reforms and the quality of public financial management systems to development outcomes but then the, the one of the key issues that I would like to put on the table, again, has been mentioned yesterday, has been mentioned this morning, is what do we mean by outcome? Uh, what, is the what is this thing that we are trying to measure? What, what is it that we are trying to achieve uh, when we embark on public financial management reforms? And luckily, there's a very long tradition of, of thought in this area. I was, as I was reviewing some of the text in the introductory framework paper, I was thinking of, you know, you could go as far back as uh, Richard Musgrave's theory of public finance, where he says there's, you know, three main areas, three main objectives of public finance, stabilization, allocation, and distribution. So there you already have a basic framework for us to think about in terms of the objectives that public financial management reforms can try and, and achieve. But then again, Professor Schick's work, uh, going back several decades also pointed us in some of these directions and the public expenditure management handbook of already 15 years ago also set out a three-way classification of objectives of, of, uh, uh, of budgeting, uh, aggregate uh, fiscal discipline, uh, um, strategic resource allocation and operational efficiency, which again can help us think about some of these issues that we want to uh, address, address today. Uh, there's a few key questions that we will be going back to as we as we move along. But before <coughs> we we do that, let me just introduce myself and the speakers for this session. Uh, my name is Paolo De Renzio. I'm a senior research fellow with the International Budget Partnership. I'm also a research associate here at uh, at CAPE at the Overseas Development Institute. I'm very happy to be back. I'm also quite a <laughs> regular feature at the CAPE uh, at the CAPE conferences. Um, the three speakers we have today, the first one on my, on my left is uh, Honorable Banu Prasad Acharya. He's the Auditor General uh, in the Democratic Republic of Nepal and has, uh, uh, prior to this position, has also held a number of senior posts in the government of Nepal, including in the, in the Ministry of Finance and as Acting Financial Controller General. He will be telling us about the, the, the experience of Nepal in uh, linking budget reforms with, uh, with development outcomes. Our second speaker uh, deserves very little introduction. Professor Alan Schick is a distinguished university professor at the University of Maryland, non-resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institution as well, one of the uh, leading thinkers and leading writers in, in, in everything to do with, uh, with budgeting. And uh, uh, last but not least, Nick Manning is the head of the governance and public sector management practice at the World Bank. He's started his career in local government in in the UK, I, I read here, but then has a distinguished international career spanning various positions at the bank, but also working with the, with the OECD. And as a discussant afterwards, we'll have Mary Bentley uh, from the CounterPoint Consulting uh, Network. She's a, a very experienced and long time uh, consultant on PFM issues and has collaborated with, uh, with ODI and CAPE on, on various occasions. Um, so without further ado, let me pass the microphone to, uh, to Mr. Acharya first to Thank talk you. about Nepal. 